Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the open source, open cloud provisioning two panels. My name is Haiying Wang. I'm CTO of Cloud Computing at Huawei. I'll be moderate. So um, as uh, OpenStack is getting more mature and is winning the battle of uh, uh, mind share of IT as a future cloud management platform, we see more and more companies standing up the OpenStack cloud. And standing up the OpenStack cloud is very hard in production environment. Uh, not to mention that it keeps them updated as the software itself changing very fast. So um, we have uh, today I have, have a great honor to hosting this panel with um, uh, creators of four popular open source uh, provisioning tools, namely maybe five. That's uh, Triple O and uh, Furman, Few, Open Crowbar, and Compass. So those are the people who create these tools, and uh, they will talk about why they formed this project, what problem they try to address, uh, what's uh, their experience with customers, and what's the feedback, what they are going forward. Uh, so we start uh, a lot, uh, we start uh, and more delay, let me just get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask each of panelists to introduce themselves and uh, give a dis short description about the tools. Now I'll we'll ask a few prepared questions along the line I just mentioned. And then at the end, we'll invite uh, audience come to ask questions. So with that, let's get started. Boris? Yeah, um, my name is Boris Rensky. I am a co-founder, chief marketing officer at Mirantis. Was I supposed to say more? It's more about a few. About Fuel, okay. So uh, for OpenStack deployment, we use uh, uh, something called Fuel. It's uh, an open source project. We develop it in the open completely following uh, the OpenStack development principles. It's uh, hosted on StackForge. Anybody can come and contribute. So Fuel is our approach to deployment. Hi, I'm Keith Basil. I work for Red Hat. I'm a product manager for our management tools. Um, we are, today we have a tool called um, OpenStack Foreman Installer, but our longer term vision is the triple O project that's upstream in the community today. Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, I am a startup, CEO of a startup that is focused on commercializing the Open Crowbar project. Um, and that, that project started out actually as an OpenStack installer. And we have uh, lately been repositioned at, with the new version of code to be a hardware abstraction layer that works with multiple uh, installers like the Chef, Puppet, Packstack. Um, doesn't really matter for us how you install on top of that. And we'll talk about why. Hi, everyone. My name is Shuo Yang. Uh, I'm a principal cloud architect uh, working for Huawei. Uh, we started a project called uh, 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 Compass, which is uh, helping us stand up the um, OpenStack, and uh, with customer feedback, we expanding our you know tool scope uh, for you know uh, hardware healthy management, all this stuff. I'm happy to you know be here to discuss with uh, this honored uh, uh, panelist. Okay, just keep the phone mic. mic. So uh, the first question is that can can you introduce how the project get formed? What set of problems you try to address? how you solve them, why you choose to make the technology open source? Yeah. So yeah, great, great question. So we started a Compass as a dog food project. Uh, when we you know, started this uh, uh, OpenStack journey, you know, we, uh, we tried to stand up our own OpenStack uh, uh, cloud. So um, back then, you know, we uh, look, look around and we felt we, we finally make decision we want to build our own script. And then over time, uh, we um, we basically you know uh, abstract this uh, script so that we basically trying to build a layer, uh, you know, which is a function. And over time, people can input the parameters to do variety of OpenStack deployment. That's how this uh, you know Compass uh, project get started. So when we started this project, I was a Dell employee leading the OpenStack initiative at Dell. This was actually back in the Austin and Bear release days. So we started on the Bear release. Um, and what we found was that it was very difficult 
to repeat an OpenStack deployment. And so we had to write operational tooling to make it possible to lay down the infrastructure necessary to run OpenStack and then run OpenStack. And at the time, we did it in a very uh, chef-focused way. We did it in the open because we were collaborating very deeply with Red Hat um, and then started collaborating. We did a lot, we still do or used to do a lot of collaboration with SUSE, who also uses Crowbar in their cloud products. Um, and it was the only way we could do that collaboration was in the open because neither company could agree on allowing either company into the inside of the product. What, what we really found was that if w in order to create a repeatable OpenStack deployment, which was our goal uh, because we really wanted to create repeatable OpenStack upgrades, in order to do that, we had to be able to create a baseline infrastructure over and over again in our labs and then over and over again at our customers. That every time we showed up at a customer and couldn't repeat a deployment with automation, uh, it created something that was impossible for us to maintain over time. And so that was a big motivation in, in what we ultimately built uh, in the Open Crowbar project. So uh, the project I'm going to talk about is Triple O. That's uh, Red Hat's forward-looking tool. Um, it came together, uh, it started with HP actually. Um, so the good thing about Triple O is that the three O's, O-O-O, is OpenStack on OpenStack. So we're, we are reusing OpenStack to deploy OpenStack. It's kind of a mind twist, but uh, it, 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 it works out very well, actually. So the philosophy of golden images uh, in using OpenStack uh, is really powerful because we have an existing community. We have well-known APIs to integrate with, and there's a lot of involvement, meaning that uh, if you look at the landscape of Triple O, You've got HP as a, as a pillar in the community. You've got Red Hat. You've got us. And you've got uh, Rackspace, who contributed a lot of work to Ironic. So it's, it's a true upstream OpenStack thing, right? Um, so we like that as Red Hat because, you know, open source is our thing. It's in our DNA. So we, if, you, if you look at other tools, and I'm not calling anybody out here, and I'm not trying to start a fight, um, but if you look at other tools, they were largely led by one company. So you were kind of baked into the philosophy of that one company. Um, so this is why we think Triple O is a longer term play where uh, you know, nobody is smarter than all of us is kind of the approach we're taking. So in our case, we started our OpenStack journey um, primarily um, as a services company. And we've been engaging with uh, many different organizations kind of uh, with their own opinions with respect to how they want to do deployment. So uh, we started with Chef and Puppet and whatever basically a company wants. And then uh, over time, um, as we started kind of to um, uncover various uh, repeatability patterns with respect to the uh, deployment configurations, uh, we started to codify those uh, so that we can deliver OpenStack environments to customers faster. And we understood that uh, um, in order to do that, we have to actually, you know, make some choices. We can say that, you know, we work with Puppet and with Chef and with Salt and whatever. We have to make choices and we have to kind of follow through. So ultimately, um, we uh, made our decision that uh, Puppet is uh, kind of uh, the configuration management tool that, that we're going to use. Um, we use a cobbler uh, for bare metal bootstrapping, and then we had to write um, somewhat of our own um, orchestrator uh, called Astute. Um, all of the bits are open, um, and uh, we, um, similar to a Triple O, are kind of a, an open project. Um, anybody can go ahead and contribute, uh, but uh, um, our vision is that uh, I think uh, deployment of OpenStack is a very complicated area. And uh, OpenStack at the same time is kind of uh, at odds with it because when it comes to deployment, um, you have to kind of uh, limit the number of configurations that you allow the customer to deploy OpenStack because you can't have a tool that deploys it in any shape or form. There is tools like that, they're, you know, they're puppet. So um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in doing that, we, we've consciously kind of uh, limited the choices with respect to you know, what, what topologies you can deploy with Fuel. Um, and uh, um, while Fuel is still open, and uh, we welcome everybody to kind of participate in the community, um, I think uh, what, what's been playing a little bit in our favor is the fact that uh, uh, the Fuel open source community um, at this point has been um, more limited than that of Triple O. And uh, um, that's kind of, you know, an interesting notion, but uh, 
when triple offers came about, we were like, oh, holy shit, there is a, an official OpenStack deployment tool. What a problem, you know, fuel is not relevant anymore. But what we came to realize going forward is that because um, in community um, there is so many opinions and because deployment is such a contentious concept that uh, it's very hard to really create a generic deployment tool that will address all different configurations and will take into consideration the opinions of everybody in the community uh, with respect to how deployment should be done. So long term, the fact that on one hand fuel is open and anybody can contribute, on the other hand, the fact that we weren't very proactively pushing it into the community and that we're able to maintain leadership and to some extent control of a project, I think gave us um, an important uh, advantage in terms of engineering lead and the fact that fuel works well and you can download it and it's maybe more limited in some ways than, than triple O, but you can just, you know, click, click, click and the thing works. So that's my answer. Good. And I will get some heat here. That's in interesting. So trying uh, to get it controversial a little bit. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, so I think uh, there's a lot of uh, you guys also use lots of open stack, uh, open source technology being used. You, you talk about a cobbler, you're talking about a puppy and a chef. So uh, for the tools and for the users, do we have to let them know there's a one better choice or this choice should be by the customers, by the uh, install situations? Uh, following that, I want to also ask, we already know there's a difference. There's image-based installation and a script-based installation. So can we guys talk about the pros and cons of this on the context of uh, uh, auto installations? Those are two different questions. Go ahead. So um, I'll split the questions up. So Triple O represents a set of Legos, right, which is great. And you can use Ironic to do bare metal provisioning. You can use Heat to do your orchestration. You can use Nova to find the host nodes to actually do your image deployment on. So that's great from a community standpoint. Red Hat's differentiation here is that we see deployment as step one. So you stand up OpenStack, great. The question that we're trying to answer on top of that is, how's my cloud doing? There's no real initiative to push an interface, a management interface, to show the cloud operator the state of OpenStack. How much storage do I have under management? What are the storage ratios? What's the deduplication ratios? How are my compute nodes doing? What is the uh, API count for Nova coming through? So all these performance metrics for your infrastructure don't exist in most tools. So with Triple O, we have the Legos on the table to actually solve those problems. So we're reusing Horizon to do an operator dashboard, for example. We're reusing Solometer to pull stats and information off of, you know, compute nodes at the hardware level, et cetera. And we're rolling that up visually for the cloud operator so that she or he or she can see the state of OpenStack uh, going forward after you do the deployment. So for us, it's about planning. You know, what does the bill of materials look like? What should the hardware look like in terms of configuration? the actual deployment at step two, and then the ongoing management of OpenStack. So that's kind of the framework in which we're building Triple O on top of. I represent a completely different viewpoint. So what we did was we started doing OpenStack deployments four years ago, and what we found was it wasn't that OpenStack deployments were really hard. It was that the physical infrastructure was very hard to get consistently correct. Once the physical infrastructure was consistently correct, deploying OpenStack is not that hard. But you have to be able to say, all right, for this site, they wanted teamed 10 gig NICs, and they enumerated in this way. And in this site, they needed the same network, but it was configured a completely different way. Or they needed these drive arrays in this way. And that, that type of hardware issue, right, the, the fact that every server is a little bit different, every data center is a little bit different, you can't fight that. You have to embrace it. This is why when we refactored Crowbar, we refactored it as a hardware abstraction layer so that, that you could then do whatever deployments you want. I'm not here representing you know, fuel. We could actually deploy fuel on top of what we do. What we're trying to do is create a repeatable baseline so that you can then compare OpenStack deployments against each other. So if you want to do it with Salt, you can do it with Salt. If you want to do it with Chef, do it with Chef, Puppet, Packstack. It really doesn't matter 
the premise that I come from is that the, you have to have a repeatable physical baseline so that you can then compare and contrast these debug the, these operational scripts and then reuse them, right? If somebody, SUSE did an amazing job doing HA OpenStack in their last product, right? You want to be able to use what they did and submit bugs against it because you're trying it. But if your hardware infrastructure looks too different than theirs, even by a degree, you might not be able to do that. And so what, what I believe is really important is that deploying hardware infrastructure is its own challenge. It has its own problems. There's architectural components that you have to expose in doing that that we don't want in OpenStack. We don't want to know the network topology at the switch level in o inside of OpenStack. That's not something you'd have in cloud. It totally matters if you're doing a physical deployment of OpenStack. And our premise is that those are separate problems. Deploying OpenStack and operating it is one problem. And using tools that make cloud deployments easier and more effective is a different problem. So uh, talking about this openness, uh, I think openness uh, means something to somebody and uh, means an entirely different thing for another type of uh, people. So openness meaning a startup can use your technology, plug their technology in, and uh, helping you, the end customer, to build a final you know, solution. And uh, if you constrain your solution into a certain you know, uh, prerequisite, then this startup or this, uh, you know, innovators will have a hard time to integrate with you. For example, if they choose to use uh, Chef to do certain, you know, stuff in their, you know, technology stack, then how can they, you know, get into your so-called open system, right? So I think, so from our perspective, we want to serve that kind of people. We want to say, the final user, not the developer, the final user is the judge, judge of whether a technology is open or not. So for, for Compass, we choose open source our technology because we believe we have a, you know, plug and play architecture. Even we work with a certain SDN vendor, right? Think of this. If you want to deploy a SDN fabric, how can you use a you know certain prerequisite you know that kind of thing? I would call it not open. So you cannot deploy you know SDN fabric. So that's my opinion. And uh, also talking about uh, sorry talking about uh, openness from the community. Perspective. Right now, there is a huge umbrella called Big Ten movement, and uh, you know a lot of project, you know, with a lot of uh, innovative part, you know, uh, ideas, getting into this Big Ten under uh, Stack Forge. And if you are following this uh, project management, as Chris mentioned, right, you are the family of OpenStack, and uh, you know, I think all of us are part of that, uh, you know, um, family. And I think, you know, with uh, you know healthy, you know, collaboration, competition, you know, every project will be open. That's my opinion. So I'm a f no one response. No um, so some, I said earlier that nobody is smarter than all of us, right? So I'm going to refer to something that happened in the keynote today. So the president of the uh, executive director of the Linux Foundation said that open source is kind of this Pareto rule where 80% of the work is open source, right? And then value add is that last 20%. So the guys to my left and right, if, so I'm in the center, I'm squarely in the triple O camp with Red Hat, open source, everything upstream first, right? So we talked to Rob, we loved Crowbar's ready state concept. The philosophy there, getting the infrastructure at the low level right and repeatable, beautiful. The guy's brilliant, okay? So we're trying to do that, <laughs> all right? We love Boris's idea of a very opinionated and repeatable process. So we're actually, with Triple O, taking those commodity Legos and doing a very stable, focused install of OpenStack that's repeatable and for our enterprise customers, very supportable. So again, I, I'm upstream first, community-based, and I, if these guys have great ideas and they're upstream, we're gonna adopt them and use them and make it better for our, for our product. And last thing, um, with our product, uh, RHEL OSP 6, Triple O will be tech preview.
you'll be able to download it. You can install it, deploy against VMs, deploy against hardware. You'll see the operator dashboard. All of the vision that we've had and been working on for the past two cycles will be realized in our next release. Okay. So I, I didn't get to talk, and it's very important that I talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that uh, um, there are two questions, and I'm not sure that any one of them was answered so far. The first one was whether or not there should be just one deployment tool, or there can be many. And the second one was the scripted up deployment approach versus the image-based, which is what Triple O uses. So as far as the first question, my opinion, clearly, that there shouldn't be just one. And the reason for it is because I think that uh, having just one deployment tool goes at odds with the pluggability and configurability principles of the larger OpenStack community. Because when you're talking about deployment, as I mentioned, you have to, and as Keith has mentioned, you have to really inject some opinion with respect to how the deployment is done. And with that opinion is where the value ultimately comes out. And because OpenStack is pluggable set of Legos, you can't have one concrete opinion that is correct with respect to what kind of house you build with this pluggable set of Legos. So OpenStack's great, but I think that as far as deployment's concerned, there will always be many different tools that deploy OpenStack in different ways and represent the proper deployment opinion of the particular organization or set of organizations behind that tool. Um, Second question about the image versus scripting. So I can probably say less about that. Um, we actually, you know, we, we like the image-based approach. We, we think it's a very elegant solution. Um, and uh, we ourselves have been very actively contributing to Triple O. I think that we're like number three contributor behind uh, Red Hat and HP to Triple O. But uh, um, uh, in, in our opinion is uh, that image-based is useful and great primarily when it comes to very large scale deployments. When you need this repeatability across very large scale, uh, you're deploying a thousand nodes, 1500 nodes, image based is great. But the reality that we've seen so far is that, you know, vast predominant set of OpenStack use cases so far has been under 100 nodes deployments. And when it comes to under 100 nodes, script based approach is better. It's better understood. It gives you much better uh, control at package level, um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's, it goes much less against the grain of what the organizations uh, are used to. Although, going forward, you know, we are very seriously looking at Triple O and you know, potentially would use some of its building blocks inside of the, you know, deployment approaches that we use with Fuel. Good. I think you guys all had enough chance. I think this is. Okay. Okay. I'll pass you the mic. Um, so, I agree with with Boris. Um, with Triple O, our the next generation, uh, we're going to take a hybrid approach. Uh, many of you know we acquired Innovance. Innovance had uh, some technology that was very attractive and very interesting. So, um, the next iteration for us is to take some of those best practices, which is lay down an image first for speed, and then come back with the upstream puppet modules to actually finish off the configuration. So it's the best of both worlds in our case. Again, multiple Legos on the table. We're going to pick the, pick the best ones to get the job done. I, I, actually, I think we are agreeing more. So <laughs> I, I, it's funny because back, I've been doing virtualization since 99. Um, and we used to call, uh, golden images ended up being an anti-pattern, just like waterfall method is actually the definition of an anti-pattern. For us, golden images became an uh, anti-pattern because as soon as you have that golden image, you now have a, a, a maintenance issue where you have to maintain and propagate that image. And in any in, in deployments at scale, variations between hardware models and during upgrades and BIOSes and things like that actually make that golden image harder to maintain because you now have to propagate one, try and maintain one, one golden thing across a larger and larger set. So what we saw and what we've modeled in best practice operations uh, at scale is you can definitely use an image to, to bootstrap a whole bunch of stuff at once, but you still have to maintain operational control of those systems in some type of, of layered approach. And the layering actually allows you to have some functional separation uh, between the layers, right? What we want to be able to do is have a, a network a module that sets up the networking consistently across whichever operating system you do. That capability 
it's really significantly important in hardware because you have to set up your NICs and your networks and your bonds and all that, your VLANs. That logic, you don't want to embed in your golden image because it's not consistent machine to machine in, in a data center. It's not consistent customer to customer. So we believe very strongly there's a lot of things in the operational stack that should be scripted because on a hardware level, they have a high degree of variation per site. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I want to add one point. Uh, so with the Docker you know, in innovation to this uh, you know, DevOps work, I think the blurring line, be, you know, the line between image-based and uh, script-based is uh, becoming a little blurry. And uh, you know, I think I agree with the, the other panelists' uh, uh, opinion that you know, how to combine both sides of the goodness it's, uh, you know, as a community, we, we should, uh, you know, uh, spend a lot of time to think and uh, innovate. Okay, just keep it. I think uh, um, this is a round two of discussion since uh, last time. I think uh, probably we need a one round three to figure out is a one twos or multiple twos. Who gonna be winner? A jury is still out, it's too early. So let me shift the gear a little bit. I think uh, standing up OpenStack is hard, but keep them running. Uh, it's even harder if those stand up software defined infrastructure not being updated uh, correctly and quickly, they may become often harder very quick because underlying software changing like crazy. Uh, not OpenStack is one of the examples, the other software in similar category. So I wanna hear you guys saying, for supporting people to operate such infrastructure, we already know standing up is hard, but if it cannot run, it will be it's useless in this context. So, on the monitoring side, on the cross-release upgrade, as I think lots of people uh, are, are asking, I want to get some uh, insights from you guys, from panelists about this. So yeah, uh, upgrade to me is the holy grail. Um, a lot of our product requirements, right? Remember, I, I had an OpenStack deployment running back in 2011. The product managers turned around to us, say, hey, great, you got it deployed. Now upgrade it because I get beaten up every six months on the, on the upgrade cycle. And so we had to give a lot of thought. And I remember at, I think it was the um, uh, San Diego summit, I was actually on stage talki trying, talking about upgrades then and hoping to get to them. The, the challenge we have with upgrades, there's multiple. One is OpenStack itself needs to be able to handle N and N minus one API compatibility. And that has to be a priority from a, a component capability. And then we actually have to deploy it with infrastructure that understands how to do a coordinated orchestration. So upgrading requires orchestration. It requires an awareness to take small steps. And one of the things that's very important to me is a scriptable site to site. So we have to have a way, um, and I, I can't go into some of what, what we did for, to reflect in a crowbar architecture. It's not the only way, but we think it's a significant way. We call it annealing. We actually anneal a, a deployment. But you have to have a way to script small changes in a repeatable way so that you can have developers test it, QA people test it, customers test it, because it's if you don't have it repeatable and site-to-site -site deployable, you actually haven't really helped us with upgrades. If you can't talk about how you did an upgrade and be a guinea pig for the next person down the line and fix the scripts that they use so that they work better and don't repeat your error, and I know most people at any scale actually have test labs where they rehearse the deployments you can't rehearse the deployments and end up with a notebook. You have to rehearse the deployments and end up with a script. Because a thousand node deployment doesn't get done, except for maybe with Tim, poor Tim, um, doesn't get done by doing a, lot, a whole bunch of hand tweaking. So we have to have automation interfaces that handle iterative, directed, and validated steps to do this type of, of sequential change within a, in an operational environment. So talking about uh, this uh, uh, update uh, problem, uh, as uh, Robert said, actually, uh, in our opinion, there are two separate parts of this uh, uh, you know, update issues. One is uh, the code of uh, OpenStack itself. Do they con you know, uh, preserve the you know, data consistency across version? Do they you know, preserve the you know, wire protocol consistency cr across version? I think that's, you know, the community is moving toward that world. And the other problem is regarding the, you know, deployment tools, you know, problem. How can you orchestrate the se sequence of your, you know, upgrade, you know, uh, process? And how can you, 
you know, roll out, you know, uh, rolling update and roll out your new updates. That's, a, you know, another issue we want to uh, talk about. So hopefully, you know, OpenStack uh, uh, core community, you know, deal with the first issue. And here, you know, as, uh, you know, the operational, more operational related community, we can deal with the other issue. Sure, so talking about the uh, upgrades, I guess, that, that's, that's the question, operations and upgrades. So um, there is a notion of uh, OpenStack upgrades nirvana, where you have zero downtime in place upgrades from version to version. That's kind of like the ideal that everybody wants to get to. I am 100% sure that nobody is there right now. And moreover, I'm pretty sure that in the foreseeable future, it's unlikely to happen. There is ways to mitigate the uh, upgrade problem at this point. Um, and uh, here's, I can tell you what, what we do. So uh, first, uh, you have to be able to upgrade the tool itself that is doing the deployment and upgrading of OpenStack. Um, so we've kind of been tackling that problem for some time. Now that problem is solved. With Fuel, you can actually upgrade Fuel without wiping out your environment or reinstalling. Second, you can do kind of a dot patch type updates to the specific services, not moving from one version of OpenStack to the other, but uh, patching specific services. So um, as of a recent release, we were able to solve this. Now, the third, the most valuable part of upgrade is actually moving from one version to the other. And um, at this point, we don't have uh, kind of a magical solution. Um, but uh, what, we, what we end up doing is uh, basically deploying the new version of an OpenStack environment um, next to the old one. And we have a tool called Pump House, which is also an open tool for migrating your existing workloads from one environment to the other environment. And that's, that's effectively the only way that we've, we've seen it be possible to upgrade your OpenStack environment in a minimally disruptive way. So one other notion that I wanted to bring up that, uh, you know, the zero downtime thing, um, a lot of people are really kind of, you know, obsessed with the zero downtime and uh, uh, zero downtime upgrades. In our opinion, the zero downtime, uh, when it comes to specifically the OpenStack, the orchestration layer, is not really an important problem to tackle because Scheduled downtime is a completely normal thing in any organization, be it sophisticated Web 2.0 guys or traditional enterprise guys. Scheduled downtime of the orchestration service, no problem. As long as your VMs stay up and the workloads themselves are still accessible, it's okay to have the downtime of the OpenStack API. So uh, in trying to solve uh, the upgrade, um, as far as the, the work that we are doing, uh, solving for the zero downtime is not something that's on our priority list in the near term. So I agree with everybody up here. It's an, upgrades are very complex. Um, this is kind of why we uh, converged on this hybrid model where you do, for major upgrades, you would do a new image and orchestrate that very carefully, as Boris alluded to. Uh, for minor upgrades, for things like, you know, heart bleed, um, you don't want to send, you know, gigabytes to a new host, you just want to make that few bytes change, right? So the hybrid model works for us, um, but the key here is orchestration. And by using something like Triple O, which is really OpenStack, we have the benefit of this 17,000 member community looking at this problem. So, uh, you know, back to the earlier comment, um, I think we can collectively solve this. It's very tricky, but I feel better being in the community with, you know, everybody looking at the problem than kind of, uh, beside the community, uh, up, even though it's upstream. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, OpenStack is great. I mean, I think we're accomplishing amazing things, but I don't think we're inventing operating scale app applications. And I think that, it, it, that, that the operations environment of people doing scale operations and doing upgrades and zero downtime deployments and changes is, is actually much bigger than OpenStack. And, Operators are out there doing all sorts of things on all sorts of systems, and I think that saying OpenStack is going to solve this problem, thank you very much, overlooks the fact that there's a lot of people with, frankly, more experience than some of the people on this team. Then, and I'm not de denigrating the experience, it's just the fact of having a big pool of talent. The bigger pool of talent on upgrades and migrations I is in the Chef, Puppet, Salt, 
Ansible communities because they do everything. And so I, I think it's, it's important for us as a community to not just think that OpenStack is going to solve this problem by themselves by creating another tool, that we actually have the mechanisms and the experience and the capabilities to bring in a broader set of experiences and solve these problems by listening to what, how people have solved these problems before. So I, I disagree with Rob a bit because he keeps saying this new tool. Uh, there's no new tool. It's OpenStack. I mean, it's out there. Uh, we use you know upstream puppet modules where 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 you know where feasible. So it, it's just orchestrating and putting things together that to solve a problem. Okay, a uh, few minutes left. I, I want to open the floor for the audience. Uh, if anyone have questions, I can pass the mic to you. Otherwise, I will continue to ask the list questions. Anyone have a question? No? Okay, so I will ask one more. So uh, it's more forward statement. So can you talk about uh, one or two things that you would like to see to change or improve for your project in the future? Yeah, I'll start. So uh, one thing that we tried to introduce about a year ago uh, was this notion of topology awareness. So when you deploy OpenStack, you need to know what your failure domains are, either be it at a rack level or a data center level or even at the node level. Uh, certain things need to know that. For example, Hadoop, um, HDFS is rack aware, right? So we want to pass that up as, as possible. And we don't want to provision services all within one failure domain because that's kind of anti-cloud, right? So we would love to see um, topology awareness kind of baked into some of the tooling that we're using uh, upstream. Yeah, sure. I can, I can say just one thing, I think. Uh, for us going forward, a fuel, the one thing that uh, we're focusing on the most is uh, um, pluggable framework. We refer to it as pluggable framework, but basically it boils down to simplifying uh, for third parties the uh, integration of fuel. So for example, if uh, you're like a storage vendor or you're a net networking vendor like or firewall as a service vendor and you want that deployed alongside OpenStack that uh, is deployed with fuel, and you want it pre-configured out of the box, um, it's, it's fairly straightforward for you to actually create a plugin and, and make it work. Um, on the surface, it sounds like a very simple problem, but actually as we started digging into it, it's uh, not as simple. So next year, I mean, we've finally come across, come across what we believe to be close, a solu clo close to a solution. And uh, um, the uh, uh, subsequent releases of Fuel will actually have the first implementation of uh, pluggable uh, architecture where um, um, third-party vendors that want their infrastructure to plug in uh, with OpenStack can actually codify the configuration settings into Fuel and expose them to the uh, end users. You want to go first? Or I'll, go, I'll happily go first. So um, we're a hardware abstraction layer. Our goal is to have multiple people in the community using community tools to do OpenStack deployments so that they can share learnings uh, between that. So what I would love to see is somebody who's passionate about the chef community and the chef cookbooks be able to do the little bit of integration to take, allow Crowbar to then d deploy the OpenStack, uh, the, pack, the, the Stack Forge chef cookbooks uh, you know, we're already doing things with Packstack. There's, you know, you could actually use any of the modules. There's Salt. So I would encourage and I'd love to see people taking OpenStack community deployments of, of OpenStack and using those against the standard hardware reference architecture so that we could actually start having shared learnings around those, around those uh, platforms. The thing we want to, you know, work next is, uh, you know, truly embrace this uh, openness uh, model. Uh, openness meaning, as I said earlier, you know, enable the startups to integrate with us. Uh, actually, there are several, you know, uh, such kind of uh, uh, in initiative going on right now. And uh, as long as you you can commit that your operational code will be open source, right? We are we are willing to work with you, and uh, that's a win-win situation for for us and for the, you know, uh, our customer. Because customer doesn't uh, buy whether the source is open or not. They buy whether the solution is open or not. And uh, with this, uh, as uh, uh, Rob have this, uh, you know, hardware abstraction la layer, if they can get plugged into our system, 
we love to work with them. And other startups, if you guys have that same mentality, we love work with you guys. That's what we want to do next. Okay. Well, you have one more? No, I, I, I just, I'm just saying that I have the next panel starting now, so I have to run, yeah. for which I apologize, but you guys can carry on. So let's that's how we end. Let's give a round of applause to the panelists. Thank you, guys.